Okay, welcome back to copyright part two. Well, you got some sage legal wisdom from Vanilla Ice and uh, saw some things about uh, you know, some really interesting examples, I think, of, of, of recent songs that are um, have had copyright lawsuits. You know, the Robin Thicke case, that was, they lost that one. Um, Lecrae and Katy Perry. Katy Perry just said, yep, uh, we, uh, I'm going to pay you for it. Um, you know, Vanilla Ice was never solved. Um, so th these have, these all have different results and you don't know what you're going to get. It's best to just stay away from the situation. I think we're seeing more and more of this happening because, um, it's, you know, music is now so easily, it's so easy to access music in so many places that it's hard not to copyright and be in copy it's not hard. It's hard not to infringe by being inspired by something, and there really, you know, there aren't an unlimited number of sounds that you can that are pleasing to the ear that you can um, you can create. And so, a lot of this music and what people do, what musicians do, tends to blend together. Well, um, I've got an, uh, another video you're going to watch next about where I go into a couple cases and we talk specifically about fair use. And so I will say a bit more there, but I want you to know that there are times when you can use copyrighted material without infringing, and that is called fair use. Let me say this before we go through these points, that uh, copyright is often one of the is, is, is often my final exam question because there's a lot that you can debate. It's fairly interesting, and you've got this great fair use defense that makes for a wonderful counterpoint. So you can use fair use as a defense against infringement when you are using it for criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. We are saying that these are reasons. If you're using it for one of these reasons, um, you can use copyright material. So for instance, you want to criticize something, you might need to show it. Okay, think about you know, late night talk shows um, where they might be mocking a movie that's come out or seen in a movie or something. Uh, you might be, you know, a news station. It, it, if it's going to do a, if it's going to tell you that there is a great new Adele song out that is breaking all the records, they need to play a little bit of it. When I am teaching, I am showing you some images and things that are copyrighted, but I'm using them. I need to show you them for, I need to sh need to play a Katy Perry song, which is a technically a copyright violation, infringement, um, because I need to tell you about this. I need, to, I need to show you so you can hear how similar they are. Right? So we look at the purpose and character. Um, what are you doing this for? We look at the nature of the copyrighted work. What is it? How are you using it? We look at the amount and substantial similarity in relation to the whole. So um, if, a, if the news is talking about that Adele song, they're not going to play the entire song. They're going to play just a snippet or a couple snippets. So you can't, you know, copy it off there. Um, and then what's the effect on the potential market? You know, is it, uh, in the case of the Adele song, I mean, it's going to sell more records if you're getting publicity. So it's a good thing. Um, you, you don't want, uh, you know, you don't want, Again, you don't want to play something, play this whole song. I can hold my phone up and try to record it, and then I don't go out and buy the song. Um, so those are the four things we look at in terms of fair use. You're going to see a second video that dives into this a little bit further. Last thing I want to cover pretty briefly here is the Boucher versus Baltimore Ravens case. And Fred Boucher did this design for the Baltimore Ravens logo. You can see that little copyright of Fred Boucher, uh, December 5th, 1955. And he submitted it to the Ravens and they essentially turned it down. And then the Ravens, the Baltimore Ravens football team came out with this logo, which looks remarkably similar. So let's compare them both. Um, as you can see, they are extremely similar. And I think we would say, you know, there is enough similarity that um, it's not a coincidence, and that the Ravens uh, engaged in substantial similarity, so there's, there's, there's a copyright issue here. And, um, you know, the courts agree on that. And the question is, you know, in what places 
can is it is it that to be taken down from every place? Now there were two places that they were using the copyrighted material in particular. One was a highlight film that the Baltimore Ravens were selling and making money off of. And the second was in the Baltimore Ravens office. They have history of the team, so they had some images and they had maybe the logo progression um, and different pictures, but they had images from throughout the years and star players. And so this logo was on some of those jerseys and some of those pictures. Well, the court came down and said, you know, the, the highlight film is for profit. And um, if you are using this copyrighted image in those highlight films, that is a, that's an infringing use. The historical um, component in the Raven headquarters, is, it's free to go into. You don't have to pay. It is merely reciting history. It's showing how things were. It's a historical document. And um, that's a good thing. Uh, they're, they're not making any money off this. It's not hurting um, Mr. Boucher, uh, and so this is, they allowed the historical archive because it's more of a, um, it's more of a news reporting and scholarship arena than it is something that's for profit. So the Baltimore Ravens were able to use a fair use defense in that instance, but not in the instance of the highlight film. Okay, well, that's what we want to cover on copyright. There's quite a bit of material there, and we will you'll see one final video that's going to talk in more detail on some cases and the uh, fair use defense in a little greater depth.